Okay, can you hear me? Hi, folks, can you hear me? Okay. So, time is coming. Well, I have a presentation so that we will get started. And thank you for coming to this room. And I will really appreciate to have a <coughs> tech talk at the great event, QuickCon. Uh, so that today we will talk about the FAS is not only the services, and all this presentation is uh, we will explain about the uh, media stream processing with serverless architectures. And my name is Kensaku Komatsu, working at NTT Communications, a telecom company in Japan, and uh, I'm a technical manager. And Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Juma Kishi, senior architect for NTT Communications. Thank you, John. And so today, I will talk about this topic. <coughs> uh, because we are now providing web artist platform services, uh, so that and, uh, we are now uh, building and uh, providing some platform services uh, for the media processing using WebRTC. Uh, so that uh, we will, uh, today we will talk about our experience and uh, the practice to talk about the serverless real-time media processing platform for WebRTC interfaces. And this platform is working on, on top of the uh, Kubernetes GKE we are now using. Uh, so that uh, we will talk about the details about the techn technical architecture of this platform today. And uh, today's topic, uh, we will cover uh, the kinds of frameworks. And before the, uh, diving into the technical architecture topic uh, <coughs> in the details, uh, I will talk about the, some kind of uh, business aspect of our uh, project. Uh, I will uh, have a quick talk about this topic. Hmm? Oops, sorry. As I said uh, in the title slide, we are now providing web outreach platform services uh, that enables, oops, oh, oh, okay. Hmm? Okay, uh, that enables peer-to-peer uh, -peer video communication between the app uh, client, application client, and we are now providing SDK for the uh, client applications for the JavaScript and iOS and Android, and we are also providing some current functionalities to make a P2P communication between the two devices also. And with this uh, uh, platform, uh, our customer is providing uh, some business application for their customers. And the typical use case is uh, our online education, and uh, shown in this slide, and the online healthcare, video conference, some kinds of use cases uh, our customer is now uh, providing uh, on top of our platform uh, using our video communication. Uh, but uh, currently, our customers have uh, some bias uh, for the wish list about our services. Uh, that means that uh, our customer is not satisfied with only the video communication. Uh, our customer is now having a wish uh, to make uh, some video or uh, audio media processing process thing on top of our platform. Uh, for example, a recording is a uh, kind of cases, and voice recognition and object detection, live surfing, and so on. Uh, our customer is now have a wish to uh, realize uh, such a media processing for their services. And to make it realize such features, uh, as I said, we are now really focused on the client side only, uh, but the using client the computing power is not enough uh, to make it realize such features I <coughs> explained before. And so that uh, we need to uh, make use of the cloud computing power uh, for the web RTC. Uh, but current platform services does not provide such features uh, because, uh, as you will know, you already know that the current interfaces for the uh, really dedicated for such as RPC, uh, that means HTTP or RAS, 
And uh, some, in some cases, uh, WebSocket is now provided, uh, but the WebRTC is now. Uh, so that, uh, and the uh, second challenge is that uh, <coughs> media stream processing requires a long time session. And that means one minute, five, over five minutes, over 30 minutes or so. And it is quite different uh, from the current model because uh, typical RPC requires uh, up to 30 seconds or so. And so that uh, current uh, server architecture, uh, uh, some platform does not apply uh, to our demand. So that uh, we decided to build our own platform services. And uh, we get started uh, this platform services uh, as a trial uh, from this January uh, called Media Pipeline Factory. And this is an overview diagram of our service uh, architecture. And uh, details about this, uh, June will talk about it later. Uh, but uh, the, our system is now working on top of the, of the Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes. And uh, there are some uh, components are working now as a serverless architecture model. And uh, the, we also mentioned that uh, we <coughs> are deploying uh, our web RTC gateway as a container on top of Kubernetes so that uh, we are now providing such a uh, uh, serverless real-time media processing platform using our web RTC gateway. And before diving into the technical architecture, we will show you the demo about our services. Uh, this is the dashboard uh, of our services. And uh, with this dashboard, developers can easily make their own pipeline scenario. And uh, as you may see that a client application will send the web RTC traffic, uh, that is media, or, uh, video, or audio stream, uh, into the, our web RTC gateway uh, running on top of the Kubernetes. And uh, if a uh, developer uh, want to add some features, uh, pipeline scenario uh, on top of it, uh, please click the. For example, uh, uh, if we, the developer has a uh, uh, decoding feature, uh, choose a file writer, icons, and then simply click. Ah, I, I think name is not required. Yeah. Just click save. Yeah, that's OK. In this way, a recording scenario will be written. And in the same time, uh, people can, oh, what the <laughs> Maybe a session, our, sorry about that, the phrase, yeah, as a fire writer, yeah. And in the same time, uh, by using the branch node, please uh, click the, yeah, plus button, and add a new branch, and uh, we can add the, some voice recognition feature, and that is using the uh, Google's uh, speech API. And uh, after that, uh, we can add some translation feature to add uh, such uh, functions. And in this way, a uh, developer can uh, compose some scenario uh, for the media processing. And uh, we can show you the, some demonstration applications. And uh, please, yes, submit. And this web application is uh, for the uh, voice recognition and the automatic translation scenarios. And uh, I think uh, you may uh, see that uh, some time uh, delay is happened uh, while uh, this point to the started. And uh, as I said, our uh, platform 
is running on top of the serverless architecture uh, so that if the uh, application requires the scenario, our platform uh, simply uh, spawns the uh, content uh, as it needed and so that uh, this uh, delay time means the uh, spawning time of our platform. And uh, please say konnichiwa or something. I'm sorry that uh, this <laughs> um, it will be short, uh, small, but uh, you can see the uh, uh, voice recognition result in here and the uh, translation result here. And in this way, a uh, developer can easily uh, develop uh, the media pipeline application with our platform. And in this demonstration, uh, we use uh, pretty defined content, such as uh, file writer, voice recognition component functions, uh, uh, translation function. Uh, but not only such as predefined functions, uh, developer can uh, deploy uh, the custom functions uh, with our HDK. And with our SDK, uh, such as input stream and output stream, uh, uh, functionality is provided uh, so that with our uh, SDK, uh, developer can easily de uh, develop uh, their own custom functions and easily deploy on top of uh, our platform. And from, now, uh, from this uh, slide, uh, June will talk about the details about the technical architecture. Okay, uh, thank you for the wonderful demo, Ken. Uh, so again, my name is Jun Makishi, an architect of, of this new serverless platform. And as Ken showed, uh, this platform is to help users focus on their media processing logic just by simply composing their pipeline, like the, he showed in the UI. And not only uh, let, let him focus on the uh, media processing logic, we also want to free them from being worried about uh, infrastructure and operation. So for the rest of the time, I will describe the solutions and internals uh, we built here, and hoping that uh, my talk would give some thoughts to those who want to build a platform like this. So this slide shows an uh, overview of our platform. Uh, media stream is a data which latency, jitter, and other matters. And in big data technology context, there is some good solution to take care of unbounded data in real time. But we couldn't find a good off-the-shelf solution to take care of media streaming like this. And particularly none for WebRTC. So we decided to build a new platform on top of Kubernetes and creating a media processing pipeline with containers. Uh, in this morning, in the keynote, Brian said that plat uh, Kubernetes is a platform to create a platform. And we did exactly the same thing. So serverless. Uh, I must first talk about why we defined our platform as serverless. Uh, when we talk about serverless, typically, we are talking about function as a service. With function, function as a service, user only needs to care about function, which is a business logic, and an event, when to fire the function. And most important, user only needs to pay for the time the function consumes the CPU resource. We want to provide the exactly same developer experience with our platform. Uh, event is typically short-lived. For example, in AWS, uh, it could be HTTP request, S3 upload, SNS topic notification to invoke a Lambda. But in contrast, in our case, we define media streaming as an event and real-time media processing as a function. So every single media streaming is a single event for our platform. And this brought some challenges. 
So first, I will look into the functions. Uh, in Ken's demo, uh, he showed two functions, uh, speech to text transcript and translation function, and we cascaded. Like that, we believe that a media processing pipeline could consist of multiple functions, and we want to give a good programmability here. So we decided to create container per function, which is exactly a microservice architecture. And we cascade gateway to those function containers. Uh, we take care of those container management. So this abstraction gives a flexibility to user that user can bring their function and just swap the function container to enable it. Also, uh, we don't share containers across multiple streaming session, which means uh, if we have a failure on a one session, it wouldn't affect the other sessions. Also, uh, state wouldn't be accumulated beyond a session, and this brought a big stability to the platform. And one more thing uh, about the scale, uh, because we can just scale, I mean, we can just scale this platform by simply creating the containers. So it's horizontally scalable. And next one is event. Um, our event is media stream, which when e where event starts when media stream, stream data flows in, and event ends when the media streaming stops, which means event is long-lived in our case and so do the functions. So we need to take care of this lifetime of long-lived function. We created a, uh, our own controller to spawn containers when we receive a new session request. And we terminate the containers when we detect a session closed event. To keep it simple, we interact only the Kubernetes API to take care of the lifecycle, just spawning the containers and terminating the containers. With this lifecycle management, uh, user's application workflow could be described like this. I used uh, serverless working group specification to describe this example of audio recording case, which is another scenario from uh, Ken showed. It is pretty simple that on receiving session open event, function will do their initialization. And on receiving a streaming data, they will start processing their logic. In this case, uh, one function would do the audio decoding, and another function would save the stream to an MP3 file. And on receiving session closed event, we simply interrupt the long running function and terminate the containers. We have a contract for contain, uh, functions that we always send sig term signal to functions on receiving a closed event so that function can gracefully finish their processing logic. With this approach, uh, any other scenario could result in this kind of diagram. And this simplicity brought, uh, help us build a reliable system. To mention about uh, CNCF serverless working group specification, I couldn't find a way to define, describe the relationship between functions. And I also I couldn't find a way to define the event to trigger an interruption to the existing function. Maybe this is a new challenge here, but I'm not familiar with the working group, so I would appreciate if you can correct me if I'm missing something. And by the way, I would love to input this use case to the working group if it's interesting to them. Last topic for the serverless is Knative. Um, some may thought that uh, why not Knative? Well, simply it was not there when we started the project. But as far as I know, Knative now supports gRPC stream. So maybe it's time to look into this. But I still see some challenges here. We could create a custom event using Knative eventing 
to take care of the WebRTC session events, and we could use Knative servings to scale functions. But I couldn't find the exact way to wire a function to another function while they are keep running. So maybe this is a challenge that uh, uh, we should need to solve. If any of you are familiar with Knative, I'd love to discuss about it because I think Knative is promising and worth merging. Also, I'm happy to contribute to the community with our findings. So, uh, let me change the gear to talk more about Kubernetes. Uh, let me ask a question. How many people in this room run Kubernetes in production? Okay, pretty much. Then how many of you uh, create more than 100 pods a day? Oh, nice. I would like to discuss about, <laughs> about your challenges. So we create more than that. Uh, we directly call pod API to create uh, containers. We don't use replication controller because it's not that much. It doesn't last that much. I mean, one session, for example, for the video conference could last 30 minutes or so. So but, uh, it doesn't uh, make sense to, to use the replication control for our case. And we create containers per session, which means if we have a many session request, we need to create many cont containers, pods, and which brought a new challenge on the performance. I forgot to put Y scale to this graph, but our platform is still in trial phase and with a limited user, but even with that, we had the experience to create more than 100 pods in a few minutes. So it was a, a, a pretty big challenge and we need to deal with the spike. And also uh, we need to spawn pod and serve it in a FIFO manner, first in, first serve manner. Another challenge here is to sync multiple containers for a same session. If multiple containers get ready state at, at a very different timing, if there's a big gap, then we could lose the, the streaming data. Unless we don't buffer, of course. Uh, another challenge which comes from uh, creating many pods is observabil ob observability. Now, this is mouthful. Um, distributed tracing. Um, Creating a pod plays an important part of our workflow. And, but our workflow also has other operations like DB transaction and authentication, as usual. So we want to observe the whole end-to-end -end workflow and drill down to see the operation, how long it took to create the pod or how long it took to make the pod to be ready state. It means that we need to correlate the the root span to the inside of the function, uh, function inside the container. We did this by propagating the span context to container environment variable and have container extract the span context from the environment variable and create a new span attaching to the root span. And this is the, the, the image of the, the, our tracing data. And merge tenancy is obviously another challenge. I don't have much time to describe everything here, but one thing to mention here is we added an, uh, our original validation logic in the application layer to check that uh, which containers can be connected with each other, besides the, the other Kubernetes features, security features. Okay, so let me then uh, describe some of the integration we did, which could be interesting to you guys. First, gRPC. We use gRPC server streaming, to, and we define protobuffer to propagate not only the payload, media payload, but we also propagate uh, media capability, metadata. This was good to uh, uh, bring interfunctional playability, but not only that, it was good to seamlessly support G GStreamer library. GStreamer is uh, most, one of the most popular media processing 
rivalry. And it requires the caps and the buffer, I mean the, the payload. With this schema, we can just simply input the data to the GStream library. And user can do the, the, some media manipulation or any other stuff using that library. Well, gRPC works well from our perspective. And to add a comment, I'm waiting for a custom transport support to uh, test some other transport like UDP. I don't know if it would make sense or not, though. And we use cloud events to control our workflow. We use cloud events to define our WebRTC events and place event gateway in the middle to dispatch con the events and so that uh, our controllers would be loosely coupled. To be honest, I don't see much benefit on using cloud events so far because there's not less tools in the market now. Uh, but yeah, I strongly expect to have some observability support in the cloud events, like event tracing. Not only the specification, but the implementations in the tools. And lastly, uh, telemetry. It's not fancy stuff, but it's one of the most important integration as always, we have a service ID, session ID, and we want to group all of the logs, metrics, tracing with this ID. We did this by uh, assigning the ID to Quarantis metadata and use metadata agent to bind the ID on when sending the data to the backend. Also, one more critical thing is to create a dashboard to make all of the telemetry immediately actionable. Well, I can spend more, 30 minutes more about this pain point in the solution, but I know I'm running out my time, so I will save this to the next chance. If you guys are interested in, uh, please reach out to me and I'd love to discuss about this. Okay, recap. Uh, we build, uh, uh, we wanted to build a server-side, cloud-based, real-time media processing for WebRTC. And we built a serverless, real-time media processing platform using Kubernetes. In other words, we completely sit on Kubernetes' shoulders. This platform is all for developer, user development experience. We want users to focus on their media processing logic, and we want to help tur turning their application to a real-time communication application easily. Lastly, uh, you can find the code used for the demo in the GitHub links here. And you can use those code and also the tricks I showed to create a platform like this. Or you can even sign up to our trial service to try out the new user experience on media processing. All of the code in the GitHub is already pre-installed to the platform, so you can immediately try it out before building your own. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you so much for your attention, and have a great day.